Good morning. It is uh, 6.42 a.m. One of the best things about winter is that sunrise is quite late. And uh, sunrise this morning is at 7.04 a.m. I'm down at a place called Marimbula, down on the very far south coast of New South Wales. And uh, just set up on the lake here looking to get some sunrise shots. Got my composition sorted out and just waiting now for the colour to happen. Quite a bit of cloud around, quite thick. Don't know that we're going to get the colour I'm after. So, you know, we'll just hang in there and we'll see what happens. As you can see, the cloud's starting to really build. And uh, that's a real challenge with, uh, with landscape photography, especially sunrise photography, because you get up really not knowing, unless it's pouring down with rain, um, really not knowing what you're going to get. And when I got up this morning, the sky was actually clear. And I think because of the, the breeze, it's actually now, um, it's now bringing some cloud in over the uh, sort of the headland and then that's going to hamper any colour whatsoever. I love a bit of cloud for colour, you want the cloud because the colour bounces off it. But we're about 10 minutes off of, uh, about 10 minutes off of sunrise and quite clearly we're not going to see the colour. So I'm going to take you for a bit of a walk so you can see my composition without me wrecking the, uh, the sand down here. I've got my Nikon D810 with me on this trip and have a look at this new lens I've got. Yeah, the 14 to 24 mecca of wide angle lenses. Um, more on that later. So I'm going to flip you around. So I'm just going to show you my back of screen so you can see how wide that lens actually is. And if we come back out, you'll see that I'm getting that tree over there all the way across. Now, I've seen several photos of this jetty um, on the internet. And a lot of people ask me, how do I find my locations? Well, I've gone onto Google Images, found the image, then got onto Google Maps and tried to find the location and was and was able to. Um, and that's a lot of that's a lot of how I find my locations. And what I'd seen was most of the, the uh, compositions I'd seen have been from on the beach directly into the water with that boat and the jetty. However, the difference was that they had calm conditions, um, and the boat wasn't so close to the jetty. The boat was closer. To this pole out here so you had some separation between the boat and the jetty uh, and the other thing with the calm conditions meant that they could get a long exposure the boat wouldn't move um, and you know they just had a it just had different environmental impact they had beautiful sky as well um, which as you can see i don't have i mean it's beautiful but it's not colorful um, so i thought what i would do is i would mix it up a bit and i'd come back a bit like this and get this tree in uh you know this this shrubbery down the front here the trees all the sand, the jetty, and the boat's no longer the feature um, in this particular composition. But I've done that because of the circumstances. Um, the other thing is the tide's out, and I think if the tide was in, it would be a better spot. So I don't know if you can see that, but the tide normally comes up to here somewhere. And at the moment, it's way down here. So, you know, with the tide out, that makes a big difference. Well, it's 15 minutes to sunrise, and I can almost guarantee you that I'm not going to get the colour I'm after. Um, but I'm going to have to try this location again. Let me show you uh, some of the stuff that's down here. These are the sort of things I love when it comes to composition. Is, is, you know, you see there's boats just scattered all over the beach. Check out this. This would be nice. This would be really nice. Um, just here is a broken old jetty. And this broken old jetty would make a fantastic um, you know, composition down low, especially if the tide was up and the water was sort of, um, you know, flowing around the base of the jetty. So I might have to come back here at sunset even to get that, but I'm definitely going to be looking into that. Uh, that's a great place to go. And if I come back around a bit further, um, you know, there's another boat shed down there with a, with a wharf. Um, that could also be really nice composition. So there's all these different options. Um, but as you can see, there's just nothing in the sky. The color is just not there. So um, what am I going to do about it? Well, I'm just going to have to muck around, maybe do a long exposure with a, a big stopper or something. So let's see how we go with that. Well, I'm about, I don't know, five minutes from sunrise, six minutes, I was close. And I can confirm, unfortunately, that there is no color for my very first sunrise of this trip, but that's okay. It's absolutely beautiful, stunning location. Anyway, the last lot of videos or vlogs that you've seen 
I've been using my Fuji X-T1 a fair bit and everyone thinks I've switched to the Fuji X-T1 but what happens is I'll go somewhere like I went to I went to Tasmania and I filmed six vlogs in a row uh, over a weekend whilst I was there you get to see those vlogs each week so for weeks for a month or a month and a half you see me using one thing the reality is I haven't swapped just to using that it's just that's what I took with me on that trip um, now you'll notice I've got the Nikon D810 here today, which is cool. I've got the Nikon D800 with me as a backup body. I always like to have a backup with me when I go away, just in case uh, something goes wrong. There's nothing worse than going on a photography trip and then having nothing with you. But I've got the 14 to 24 mil lens, which is like the mecca of wide angle lenses. Uh, and if you've watched a video, I can't remember how long ago it was, where I explained that I actually had my previous one stolen from me. I have a company called Auslens Rental where I rent camera gear and I'm actually contemplating not reopening it for this reason. And that is that I've now had several instances where my equipment's been stolen. Anyway, uh, I decided to spend some time looking for a new one and I found this one. Uh, I found this one down in Melbourne. They, they very rarely come up secondhand at a reasonable price. And I found this one and the guy said there was a slight problem with it around the 15 millimeter mark on the zoom ring. Uh, and I asked him a couple of questions and he told me it works fine. So I bought it, more the for me, because I got it to my home and I was actually jamming at 15 millimeters. So there was distinctly something wrong with it, definitely something wrong. Contacted Nikon, they said send it in. They I sent it in, it was $730 to repair. Uh, now, still cost me, you know, maybe $700 cheaper than if I had bought new, um, but not the bargain I thought I was getting. So be very, very careful if you're buying anything on Gumtree. If you can't go and inspect it, don't buy it pretty simple I'm a, I'm a sucker i trust too many people now you might be wondering what's this big ring on the front a lot of people ask me that um, and that's my leaf filter holder now the good thing about this means that now i've got this lens back with my leaf filter holder for this lens is i can now start using my leaf filters with my nikon uh, which i haven't been able to do for a couple of years i'm really excited about that so first of all uh, leaf filters has this it's a mammoth ring, by the way. Everything's huge. I'm going to look tiny as I get these filters out. <laughs> anyway, this is the filter holder. And it has to be huge because on the front of this lens is this big bulbous thing, you know. I don't know if I'll turn it around a bit so you can see maybe. But it's huge, bulbous, right? Just big bulbous front end on this lens. As you get this ring and you stick it onto this little holder. And all of a sudden you've got this filter holder on the front of the lens um, that allows you now to grab the filters out. Now I've got this really nice leaf filter case. Um, that I bought and I'll just get a I'll get a soft grade out just and just a very mild one because the sky is not crazy there we go I've got a Lee uh, 0.6 soft grade which is two stops of light and we'll just stick that in there for now As, remember I told you they were huge take a look at that huge filters what it does especially if you watch through the live view is it just evens out the exposure so nicely and it's really worthwhile looking into so if you haven't used filters before I suggest you you take a look at doing it because now I've got this beautiful coverage of cloud in the sky uh, it's going to be quite a dramatic photo it's going to say winter it is the first day of winter today this photo is going to say it's winter but with that filter and that has evenly exposed everything and what that means is that I don't have to, have to go to the trouble of trying to you know uh, fix it in Lightroom although you can I mean this camera's got amazing dynamic range and I probably wouldn't normally use a, a, a graded filter in this instance. Um, although, you know, it's, it's going to make my life easier. And the less you can push and pull pixels inside an image, the better off you're going to be. You're not going to damage it, right? So I can't tell you how happy I am to have this baby back. I love it. Um, and the lens itself is amazing. So 14 to 24, it's, it's wider than any other um, lens you can get for the Nikon unless you go prime. Uh, and it is one of the sharpest, one of the most amazing lenses. So. Uh, f2.8 it's just an amazing lens and you know it's gonna it's gonna bring me back more joy uh, for my uh, landscape photography not that I didn't have it already but I'm um, just gonna love using it so I thought I'd share that with you considering we're not getting an epic sunrise let's check the time one more time 7.04 a.m. Uh, and that is sunrise time so it is unfortunately no color considering there's like zero color in the sky it's time just to play silly buggers uh, I'm going to show you something that's kind of cool. First of all, this is the world's biggest circular polarizing filter. Let's put that in, have a go at that. I mean, I love this lens, but these filters are ridiculous. <laughs> Find the best spot. If you do have a CPO, this is the trick, is you put it on, you spin it around. Here, I'll take on with that. Beautiful. 
Yeah, that's actually quite good. Um, it does make quite a difference, uh, the CPL. So let's put the, uh, let's put the world's biggest big stop right on. When I say biggest, I don't mean darkest or, you know, most stops, I mean in size, it's a monster. And let's do a long exposure. Because there is no color, we may as well use the opportunity. Now I'm gonna have the problem that the boat is gonna be completely uh, blurred. Yeah, there it is, by the way. Look at the size of that. Is that big or what? <laughs> All right, let's. Okay, so I'm in bulb mode. Let's see what happens with a, I don't know. We're gonna to need to do like a minute or something. I have no idea what I'm gonna to need to do. I better get a timer going. I actually left my watch back in the room. So we'll start the stopwatch, stopwatch and we'll see what happens. And we'll do a minute. And uh, I'll come back to you in a minute or so and we'll see what my long exposure looks like. I finished my one minute exposure. It wasn't long enough. Uh, it was okay and it did give me an idea of what's going on. What is amazing is the cloud movement because we have got a fair bit of breeze this morning. Uh, so I'm gonna go for two minutes or maybe a minute and a half, I don't know. I've got the stopwatch going. Today it's just a bit of a guessing game. Somebody asked me the other day, do I use the calculator to calculate it? And I do have it on my phone actually. I do have like the big stopper calculator where you put in the aperture or the shutter speed, the aperture and shutter speed of what you've got um, without this big stopper on it. It tells you what to put it in uh, or what to use. Um, but I don't use that quite often. I just do this because I find uh, I can get pretty accurate pretty quickly just with my guesswork. And I don't know if it's a quick mental arithmetic that goes on, um, but I think that's what it is. I think what happens is after a while, you just get used to what it's going to be based on what it was. So, um, you know, when, before I put the big stopper on, it was actually just under a second. Um, so it was one third of a second it was shooting at. So if I know that, uh, then with 10 stops, you can sort of roughly work out what's gonna be. So we're gonna go for a minute and a half, which is now. I'm gonna stop it, have a look. And, um, well, wow, pretty good. Still a bit underexposed, um, but not badly. Uh, it's, it's, it's not actually underexposed, but it is underexposed, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna stop it, I'm gonna do another one for uh, two minutes. Well, I'm afraid it's a bit of a bust. It's about 20 minutes after sunrise. The long exposures are working out okay. My two minute was probably the best. I did a two and a half and it sort of blew out a bit. So, uh, unfortunately, Looks like that's it for today. Uh, but sometimes that's how it goes with landscape photography, and sometimes you get up and there's just no colour. A few things that uh, I think I'd, I'd like to come back to this spot. Uh, I might have to come back at sunset. I'm gonna have to check the tides. But really happy, really stoked I got to get out and shoot with my 14 24 mm lens. Uh, and you're gonna see this a lot more because this is my favourite beast of all time, this lens. And this filter kit, um, you know, that, that fits it, means that I get to do that. So if you've enjoyed the video, please, a couple of things you can do, give it a thumbs up, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already, uh, head across to my website on threelegs.com and download your free copy of my ebook, 10 Tips to Better Photos. Well, it's a bust. It's a bust. See you next time.